Hey, algebra students, Michaela emailed me at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com to ask me an excellent question that I think is going to help a lot of you better understand multiplying binomials. So she was watching my video. I already have one on this topic. It features problems much like this one I have written over here. And while she was doing it, she said she got a little confused. She said that the first thing she thought that she should do is add the like terms. And I feel like that makes sense. Uh, Michaela, we see those subtract and those add signs, and there seem to be some terms here. Why don't I just start with combining the like terms? And what Michaela noted was instead of me doing that first, I first multiplied everything from the first group. So when she says everything, she means every term, and went ahead and multiplied those things through to the terms in the other group. And she wanted me to explain why I did that. And I was so excited, Michaela, because when you ask me to explain why, that shows me that you are really increasing in your mathematical understanding. Why is so much more important than how? And it all boils down to one of the most important basic concepts that you need to understand as a GED student. That's the order of operations. You say, this doesn't look like an order of operations problem to me. And students tell me that all the time. But what you, students who say that don't realize is that the order of operations isn't a problem type. It's a basic rule of mathematics. Whenever you're simplifying, we follow the order of operations. So when we simplify, now you might say, what does it mean to simplify, Kate? I thought that that had something to do with fractions. Well, I mean, there are ways to simplify fractions, uh, but that's not what simplify means. Simplifying is when we perform the indicated operation. So you can see here, um, Ashley was talking about combining like terms because that's what we call adding and subtracting in algebra. And she saw some subtractions and addition, addition signs. She was talking about multiplying because the symbols here with this parentheses shoved up against that parentheses indicate that there's some multiplication there. So that's what I mean. Um, it's order of operations we use when we're simplifying, when we're performing the indicated operations. It's the order we always go in. It's kind of like the... Um, how gravity just kind of always applies <laughs> um, while well, you're on Earth anyway. <laughs> the order of operations, unless you find a way around it, um, always applies unless you uh, are as long as you are simplifying, I should say. Okay, so directions here could tell you simplify. They could also say multiply, find the product. They don't necessarily have to say the word simplify for you to think, okay, the four steps of the order of operations are first groupings then exponents and their, so powers and their inverse, the roots, and then multiplication and its inverse division, and finally addition and its inverse subtraction. Okay, so in theory, I would want to deal with groupings first. So actually, let's do that. Let's be really, really strict. Let's say, oh my gosh, I have to follow the order of operations to a T, and let's come here and look at this grouping. That is a grouping. This subtraction is grouped. So no wonder you wanted to start here. 2x minus 1 is in a parentheses. Shouldn't I combine those terms? Well, the key is in what you said. You said, aren't I supposed to combine like terms? Let's say that again. Aren't I supposed to combine like terms first? There are no like terms in this grouping. The first term 2x is an x term. It has a variable of x. The second term minus one is what we call a constant term. It just means it's a number with no letters. Um, and so therefore, these are not like terms. I cannot do this subtraction. Like I might want to, it might be grouped together. It might be where I try to start, but there's nothing I can do here because these terms are not like, I cannot currently subtract. Now let us examine the other grouping and see if I have a similar scenario going on. And indeed, look at that, 4x, that's an x term, and plus 4, that's a constant term, a plain old number term. I cannot combine things unless they're like, they're the same kinds of things. So x's can only add with x's. Plain old numbers can only add with other plain old numbers. These are not like, and so I could not do this addition even if I tried.
And so I'm not going to be able to start with the grouping. And there are no exponents here. I don't see any of the little floating numbers or the radicals. So now that leads us to multiplication and division. Now you might say, Kate, how am I supposed to do this multiplication? And that's when it's super duper duper important to understand that lovely idea that multiplication passes out. When we first learn it, we call it the distributive property. When we look at it in this context, your teachers will often say FOIL um, to help you remember to pass things out. But it's that same basic idea, the same one that Michaela uh, asked me about the fact that every term in the first parentheses is going to get passed out to every term in the second parentheses. And that allows us to multiply even when we couldn't deal with the groupings. So let's do that. Let's start with just the first term in the first parentheses and let's work on passing that out, that multiplication out. And you might say, Kate, this sounds really crazy, wild. How come I can do this? And I would say you've been doing this since elementary school. Think about when you multiply two digit numbers. These are two term groupings. These are two digit numbers. You did the same thing. You picked up one of those digits and you multiplied, you passed it out. So same thing here. I'm going to pick up one of these terms and I'm going to multiply by passing it out. So let's do that. 2x times 4x. Well, we can multiply those various factors, the 2, the x, the 4, and the x in any order we want, which will make our lives easier. 2 times 4 is 8. And x times x, remember we use exponents to talk about repeated multiplication. So if I have two x's multiplying, I'll write x squared. Wonderful. And now again, I'm passing it out. So now I'll multiply the 2x with the positive 4. So uh, 2 times positive 4 is positive 8. And I just have a single x this time. So that'll be positive 8 x. Okay, now I'm done with the first term. It's time to multiply with the second term. Remember to take its sign with it. That negative belongs to the 1. So negative 1 times 4x would give me negative 4. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And then just stick that x on there. It's the only one we've got. And then negative 1 times that final term, positive 4. Negative 1 times positive 4 is negative 4. And now, now that I finished the multiplication, now it's time to start adding and subtracting. Those individual terms aren't trapped in those groupings anymore like they were before. Before they were inside groupings, I couldn't cross grouping lines in order to add or subtract them and break that order of operations adding before I did the multiplication. But now that the multiplication is done, I totally can combine like terms. And we can see that the only like terms we have the only terms that have the same variable portion are this x term plus 8x and this other x term minus 4x. And you can do it in your calculator if you need to, but if I have 8x's and I take away four of those x's, I will have positive 4x's. Again, remember, now I'm adding and subtracting, okay? Now I'm adding and subtracting. It's like counting. It's like saying I have eight xylophones and I take away four xylophones. How many xylophones am I going to have? I'm going to have four xylophones. I'm going to have four xylophones. I shouldn't have used X xylophones, man. I should have used A. It could have been easy. We could have thought about apples. All right. And now, well, what do I do with the other terms? Well, you guys overthink this all the time. Just drop them down. There's no other x squared terms for this to combine with, so it's just there in the answer. And there's no other constant terms, plain old terms for this to combine with, and so it's just there in the answer. And I'm done now. And the reason why I'm done now is the same reason I couldn't deal with my groupings before. There's no like terms. This is an x squared term. This is a plain old x term, and this is a constant term. When they're not like, we can't combine them. I always say that simply with, we can only add and subtract the same kinds of things. These are not the same kinds of things. They cannot add and subtract. I'm done. All right, Michaela, I totally hope 
that cleared things up and I've been feeling a little flaky lately and I have this like sinking feeling that I called you Ashley like 17 times in the video. If I did, I apologize. I know your name's Michaela. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I hope this explanation made sense to you and to everybody else watching. If you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And then of course, if you're wondering why the heck we do what we do in mathematics, just know that I'm gonna prioritize your videos because that is what struggling students need to understand. If we stand a chance of remembering all this math, we've got to know why. And this idea of the order of operations is building block so important. It needs to be like breathing to you to understand that order of operations. All right. Happy learning.